question, so uh, you might as well go home. Uh, open and close. <laughs> hey, well, open and close. Legitimate you chair, case. Legitimate chair, case. No close. questions. Um, I mean, I suppose I could preamble, but is there a continuing challenge in airports, especially secondary airports, to maintain them as airports as opposed to the pressure on the development opportunities around airports? I mean, so we, no, no. I, as you know, yeah. Mr Wilson, I will have a heart-to-heart, -heart, as it were, earnest discussion about the issues at Archerfield and, and Bankstown and, you know, and, and, you know, a lot of those people that have been good old pilots and had a hangar there feel they've been dudded. So, but are you confident that Bankstown will remain a viable fly-in, fly-out training airport? I'm confident, Senator, that Bankstown will, will remain as an airport. Its, its business may change, over, may change over time. Um, I'm, also, I'm also well aware, as is the department, of the challenge that uh, small secondary airports in, in our capital cities have in generating sufficient revenue to uh, continue to invest in the, in, in the airport. Um, which is why we've seen uh, non-aeronautical developments on the airports to balance the yep. costs associated with the maintenance of, of, of a, an aviation facility at the airport. The changes that occurred through the, through the uh, privatisation process yep. have meant that the commercial realities of the operation of an airport have become much more Aye. stark. Aye. Um, and so, you have, we have gone, we've seen a transition period from um, a period where government provided subsidies through the way in which the government operated all of the airports to a situation where those small secondary airports now need to stand alone commercially. The success of that's no better judge than, you know, Sydney or Canberra and the problems you've differentiated, no better uh, Shannon and Bankstown, where I noticed that Bankstown and Camden airports, uh, according to this article, are now up for sale again. And I guess it's a forced sale from the bank. I think the debt's 190 odd million or whatever it is. Um, and you'd be aware of the sale yes. proposition. Yes, Senator, I am. Um, so, I mean, I highlighted the crosswind thing in. I'm not going to ask you to answer this, but. In my view, yep. if you can maintain the viability of the airport, you've got to maintain the flexibility of the airport, as well as add to the commercial opportunity of the vacant land. In my view, they've made a mistake at Bankstown with doing away with the crosswind circuit. I won't, I won't comment on that no. particular issue, but it should be noted that um, over the last 12 months, um, and into the future, Bankstown have indicated that they will be investing um, uh, capital, capital sums into aeronautical developments. Yeah. So there is... That is whoever owns it. That, well, as under its current management structure, yeah. there is uh, plans for additional investment in aviation facilities. Having said that, they obviously are in the, the process of looking for a new, uh, new ownership structure. Yes, OK. Well, there we go. I was just filling in while I was waiting for someone to turn up. So, sorry, Chair. Uh, yes, my, my, my fault. But, uh, look, thank you. No, 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 no fault here. This is a no-fault committee. Otherwise, I'd be all here. the excitement of actually starting two and a half hours later is we're making remarkable ground. So, thank you, Chair. I want to go to questions in, uh, uh, in line with the 2014 Harper Competition Review, if I can please, and of course I will also have some commentary around some of the suggestions, and Northern Australia has a very um, forefrontal um, uh, highlight of uh, my work and certainly Senator Gallagher's work and, and our past jobs as well. So, um, who do I ask them of? Mr. Doughty? Uh, no, Wilson. Oh, Mr. Wilson, hello. So, to the department, are you familiar with the Harper Review position on air cabotage arrangements? 
Yes, we are, Senator. Thank you, Mr. Murdoch. And in fact, the department gave a response to the review on this matter uh, in fairly forthright terms. Is that correct? We provided, it? We provided a submission which set out some very clear views. Okay. Yep. I think I'll just read it into the to the Hansard, the Department of Infrastructure's re reply to the Harper report of September 2014. Please just bear with me, Chair. It won't take long. I'm quoting. All right. The department notes. The panel's view is that there are likely to be considerable benefits flowing from the removal of air cabotage restrictions on remote and poorly serviced domestic routes, allowing foreign airlines to carry Australian domestic traffic. There is little to support the panel's simplistic view. However, the department considers the current policy of reserving the Australian domestic market for Australian-based airlines ensures domestic airlines all operate on the same level playing field in relation to industrial relations and taxation, as well as under the safety and security oversight of the Australian Government. As such, the Department does not agree with the panel's views on relaxation of aviation cabotage arrangements, including for, for specific routes only. And the last paragraph, Australia has one of the most open and competitive domestic aviation policies of any major country. The current policy allows any foreign airline interested in competing in the Australian domestic market, subject to Australian safety, security, employment and taxation arrangements, to do so via an Australian-based subsidiary. So if I can, Mr Murdoch, ask you why is the Harper Review's view on air cabotage simplistic? Um, our submission stands on the public record. Um, for all of the, the matters uh, there, we think uh, it is much more complex than has been presented by some in relation to, to the fact that there... Firstly, uh, I'm not sure that, in our view, that the Harper Review uh, set out what the problem was they were trying to address by their, their commentary on aviation cabotage. Uh, as we indicate in our submission, Australia has uh, among, if not the most, liberal aviation regulatory settings in the world. Um, we have a vibrant, growing aviation industry and a growing proportion of Australians who see aviation travel as an everyday part of life. Um, we've extre ex achieved extraordinary success in the growth of the industry and also Australia's use of air travel, which I think is a, is a terrific benefit over the last uh, 25 or 30 years since deregulation of the aviation industry. Mm. Uh, for all of those reasons, we, we do not believe the Harper inquiry adequately uh, explain what the problem was they were trying to address and how any changes to the policy settings would actually lead to improvements in the either the accessibility of travel or uh, growth of the Australian industry. Um, so for those reasons, we, we've made those comments. We, we're obviously happy to engage in a debate. Mm -hmm. People have different views to ourselves. That's, that's quite understandable. And uh, we, we only wish that uh, the debate happened with full facts on the table uh, and a full explanation of the issue that's trying to be addressed. Mr Murdoch, thank you very much for that very comprehensive answer. Um, then I will move to the question, what does the department mean when it's said of all air cabotage, I quote, the department considers the current policy reserving the Australian domestic market for Australian-based airlines, ensures domestic airlines all operate on the same level playing field in relation to industrial relations. Well, Senator, uh, Australia, as you're aware, has uh, what we call investment cabotage, which provides that Australia does, subject to uh, the consideration of the Foreign Investment Review Board, does allow foreign uh, entities to own 100 per cent of Australian domestic airlines, and that's worked very successfully through the growth of uh, airlines such as Virgin and Tiger and yep. Rex. Um, but all, opera all operations in the Australian market have to operate under the Australia's industrial relations legislation, Australia's taxation legislation, and also under, the, under a, an air operator certificate issued by CASA and in accordance with their transport security program issued by this department. Um, that to us is, uh, applies across all of the, the airline industry. Uh, proposals for certain forms of cabotage access may involve a uh, certain application where a foreign operator could operate under their foreign air operator certificate uh, and applying their, uh, their employment conditions of their home country into certain sectors of, of aircraft operations. 
uh, that is not currently permitted under our cabotage arrangements. Yep. Just to revert, if I could. Yes, yes, Chair. Um, under this arrangement, you know, if it's whatever airline from wherever lands in Darwin, picks up domestic passengers and drops them in Sydney, <coughs> that correct? Uh, that, is, that, that, is a, that is one option which has been put by, by some parties that... Or, or, you, or to wherever, Brisbane yeah. or... That you would allow an international carrier okay, who's doing a stop okay. in one location to pick now, up domestic passengers. I, yeah, a bit like the beef. If we're going to do that, are we going to get an agreement from the US that if we land in Los Angeles with Qantas, we can load her up with the Yankee passengers and take them to New York? Um, which you can't do at the present time? I, I just, I, there, there are issues that would can have I, to be addressed. Can I just confirm, Chair, just from the government's perspective, what, what, what is the position? The government has made no decision to remove aviation cabotage. I know that's the issue that's currently been talked about. But there ha no, no, this needs to be on the hand side record for people listening yeah. in. We are clearly aware of reports in the media that are calling for the relaxation of that. We have certainly received many suggestions as part of the Northern Australia white paper process. We're obviously finalising the white paper over the coming months, but no decision has been made. No, no, I appreciate that. And I just that. need that to be on the hand I side record. That, but for sadly, clarity. sadly. Like the US beef issue, yesterday I got my first email trail of a discussion amongst certain people about this issue. I, I've got no idea. Are happening. They're in the media. In. We know and like that. the beef, we're just saying, hang on. But let's just make sure we know what the government's position is. Let's make is. sure there's a bit so of that during this dirt under the fingernails. No, that, that's fine. But just the government's position, no decision has been made. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, so nothing like being in early. Senator.